Hello, this is Dr. Ryan Romine from Shenandoah Conservatory, and this is a tutorial video for the 2018 All Virginia Audition Etude for Bassoon. We will begin with a discussion of potential issues and tips on how to solve those issues, and then we'll finish up with a recording I made a few days ago in my studio. After playing the piece through a few times to get a feel for what you're dealing with, the first thing we should do is mark where we will use our right hand pinky G flat instead of our right hand thumb G flat. The first spot I used it is in measure 5 at the end of beat 1, where the pinky fingering allows me to move directly from my full E flat fingering, which involves both my right hand middle finger and thumb B flat. The other place where pinky G flat is very helpful is on each of the three G flats in measure 23. Since we are coming from C each time, the pinky G-flat fingering allows us to put down fingers that are all on the same side of the instrument. Using the thumb for G-flat could cause issues with finger timing, which leads to unwanted cracks or even extra notes. Thumbs or pinkies aside, no matter which G-flat or F-sharp fingering you use for any piece, you will need to keep the left hand first finger half hole quite open, otherwise the note will crack. Next, we need to figure out where to breathe. The first spot will likely be in measure 8, after either the E or the D, though both options are problematic. Breathing after the E can get in the way of the rhythmic motive, but breathing after the D can make it difficult to create a convincing decrescendo. In my recording, I have chosen to breathe very quickly after the E, hiding the breath as much as I can in the space created by the lift before the C-sharp. The next place for a breath is after the first F in measure 13. Since we had gone a long way before breathing in measure 13, it will be helpful to take another breath after the low F in measure 15. The last breath I put in is in measure 17 after the high A flat. Here, I have extended the poco rallentando from measure 16 through measure 17, so the breath makes musical sense. If you have a good read and you play this etude fast enough, you shouldn't need another breath before the end. However, if you do need another spot to grab some air, measure 21 after the first G would work, as would measure 24 after the first C or after the G. Now, since this etude starts on an E-flat above the staff at forte, we will need to start that note with what might feel like too much support. The lower abdominal muscles should be highly involved. This will allow the note to speak clearly and in tune without putting too much of the work on the face muscles, which need to remain relaxed enough to let the reed vibrate. We will then need to combine this large amount of support with a narrower mouth shape where the back of the tongue is rather high, as if saying the letter E. Use this setting of support and tongue for the first three notes, and then begin opening the mouth and throat space as you continue all the way down to the low C in measure four. You may be wondering about the very first articulation marking. This tenuto line combined with a staccato dot tells us to put more weight into the attack and sustain of the note, like we would in a tenuto, but then to let the note lift at the end like we would with a staccato. The regular accents in measures 1 and 2, and throughout the entire etude, will require noticeable muscular involvement. Playing them so that the audience can really hear them will feel like quite a workout. When you look at measure 3, you will notice that there is a natural placed before the C at the end of beat 1. My best guess is that this is an error and that the natural was meant to be placed before the B. But, since this is what is written, I would suggest keeping the B flat as it is and playing the C natural as C natural. If you find this odd accidental distracting, it may be helpful to just scratch it out. In measure 6, if you are having problems with the slur into the higher E on beat 2, Try leaving off the right hand first finger in the E fingering. Doing so often helps clean up many slurs involving E above the staff. Note that the first pitches of both measure 9 and 10 are A flat.
and not a natural. It will also be tempting to articulate the high G in measure 10, but don't do it. That's not what is written. The counting in measure 12 looks a little weird at first, but the only thing you have to do is keep the notes going at the same speed as the notes in measure 11. The slurred octave C's are much more of a problem. To get through this part cleanly, you will need to find an internal space and air speed that will allow the lower octave to speak when the whisper key is added. It will also be helpful to very quickly relax the jaw downward on the lower C to create a bit more internal space, sort of like a donkey going ee-aw. The easiest way to then pop back up to the higher octave is to flick or just simply hold down the left hand thumb high C key. I mark this venting in my music with an X over the affected note. In my recording, you will notice a sudden change in dynamic in measure 14. This is not intentional. It seems to have happened simply because the tone holes for E flat were much nearer to the microphone than the others. In measure 19, be careful to articulate the last two sixteenth notes. They were slurred in the opening, but they are not slurred here. The last two notes of measure 23, G flat to G natural, should be treated in the same way as the downward octave C's in measure 12. Keep a relatively normal support and airspeed setting, but then pop the jaw downward on the low G natural. Here, you should also be sure to quickly close the half hole. Even a small leak in the first finger will keep the note from skipping into the lower octave. From there, it's just a matter of keeping track of the different articulations and accents in the last few measures. The last note should sound and feel like a puff of smoke disappearing into the air. And now, here is my recording. <laughs> 